Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1971-74 Carryover League. Continuing our series of looking at card sets, we're looking again at the 1971 card set, um, the card set that has the most cards removed from it in the league that begins next year. Currently, six players for 32 teams are gone, and so the stacks are kind of thin, of course. And in our last week, we looked at that what the teams were going to keep or waive uh, for the top 16 teams in the draft. So we're going to continue with eight more teams tonight, at least in the year of 1971. There will be players put on waivers in 71. There has to be two per team. And then there can be, they can also be on waivers in the following year if their careers still continue. But that could be, it's usually random. And so we, there definitely will be a 64-player waiver class. So we're kind of looking at that as well when we're looking at this box. So we're going to pick up with the team 17th uh, in the draft, which is the Texas Rangers. And they started the offseason with six guys they wanted to keep. And they were able to, through trades, whittle it down to four keepers, which are Alan Canigliero, Howard, and Bob Johnson. And here they are, the, the four here. And as far as keepers go, Bob Johnson, as a keeper, it could very well be this is the card they, they want to keep. Uh, 345 on four days rest. You have Frank Howard, probably his last big year. Really crushes lefties. You could give him a full-time gig, though he's just ordinary against righties. Bernie Allen. Nice bat as a platoon player, uh, has power, um, gets on with walks. His defense, he was a three, now he's a four. But this might be the last year you could bring him in there. And then Billy Canigliero has a similar year here that he had in 70. He's got 11 homers. He had 18 in 70 but and more plate appearances. He did this, of course, with the uh, Red Sox. But really, this is a nice card as a, look, he's even a minus one arm three in center field. If you didn't want to put him in the corner, you could put him in center. And that's a lot of extra base hits against righties and against lefties. It's a nice card with power, not uh, good base running. So of these, you know, it's not bad at all as far as the keepers. If they select the two keepers from the 71 box, you have Johnson, Howard, and Canigliero. And then with that, we will also look at the two guys that they put on waivers, not to be on the Rangers, but elsewhere. Danny Cater, known for high batting average. He'll have a 300 year coming up. This year's just 276. Did it with the Yankees. And Lytle, he had a nice 1970, but in 71, he's only hitting 189. He might not get selected in the draft. That's the Texas Rangers, keepers and waived players. Next up, we have the Pirates. Very disappointing team in that they just finished at 500 for about the second year in a row. And this is a team with a World Series pedigree. They got to get going. And this is their year, 71. So big, huge expectations. There, is, there have been big expectations. Pittsburgh began this process with a proper number of keeped, waived, and retired, and didn't make a move. They didn't make any transactions yet, with you know, and they're going to keep the same four guys, and that would be Clemente, Al Oliver, Robertson, and Sanguian, through the farm system, through their own, you know, team. Obviously, this Clemente will be taken, his big 71. It's still a slight step down from 70. But a 341 hitter, World Series MVP. So this Clemente will be taken almost assuredly. Al Oliver, really need him to play moving to center field. And with this card, not so much. We know he does much better. He's still kind of raw here. And so one of his next years, probably 74, Oliver will be taken. Bob Robertson, my goodness. Always getting, gets forgotten from this team. 
but he could really bash the ball. Had a nice World Series, too. 26 homers and 271 batting average. You see 520 plate appearances as a right-handed hitting first baseman. Remember, Stargell is in left field. So this, I think this Robertson gets in the league. Which means that this Sanguian may not, or Robertson may not, because you can only take two guys from any year. You want Clemente, and it's either Sanguine or Robertson, and whoever you don't take, you got to take in a different year. So really, it's an evaluation of Sanguine and Robertson. What do these guys do in 72, 73, and 74? That's what we're going to have to discover. And they have two guys they put on waivers. And really, in the case of Gene Alley, they just couldn't keep him because he was the fifth guy they would have liked to have kept, and they could only keep four. But if nobody takes him in the draft, he is a pirate, you see. They'll go get him, as he still can play shortstop. He was a two, now he's a three, but he's a beast dealer. So it remains to be seen if they bring him back. Jerry May actually has a better year this year than in 70. 252 year, and it's balanced. This card's going to be picked up by somebody, depending on what this arm is. I mean, that's a negative arm. I mean, he's an everyday catcher. So that'd be a nice little waiver pick for some team. And that's your Pittsburgh Pirates. All right. Moving on. The Cardinals, right behind the Pirates, picking 19th. And you could say the Pirates underachieved and the Cardinals overachieved. Actually, the Cardinals knocked the Pirates out, technically. They swept them four straight in their last meeting, and that effectively knocked the Pirates out of the wild card. Cardinals started this process just like the Pirates, with a proper number of keeped, waived, and retired. And they, but they did make moves, adding and subtracting players to get to keep, stay at four two and two. There were several transactions, and it involved getting Reggie Smith away from the Red Sox. That was transaction one. Now this card is still a Red Sox, but Reggie Smith will have a card with the Cardinals in 74. You could take either one though, because the trade, we just made this trade. It really was that the Red Sox had so many outfielders, they were willing to let Smith go. And then you have Ted Sizemore, also from the Dodgers. He does play for the Cardinals in 71, and the Dodgers made the move. Got rid of him to make room for Davey Lopes. That's a decent Sizemore card, as it is with Smith. Next two guys. Actually, uh, Bill Sadakis is a keeper as well, but he didn't play in 71. or didn't have enough plate appearances. They didn't make Bill Sadakis' card. We have Chuck Taylor. He's good against righties, but I'm not willing to get that. You should not want to have this card in the league. Too vulnerable to the left-handed batters. So I'll stick with the maybe Sizemore because I have more years of options for Smith. And they put their two guys, they put on waivers. Danny Combs acquired from Oakland through San Diego. Not very good anymore. That's why he's on waivers. 621. This card probably won't make it. Even though I'll, I like to say if you throw left-handed, you get in the league. <laughs> At a certain point, you still don't get in the league. And Wayne Simpson, an unfortunate injury in 1970, he was never quite as good as his brilliant 1970 campaign. Too many walks here for my comfort for a starter. Plus the homers, the lefties. 470-70 array. That's why they're on waivers. Waiver wire is exactly what you think it is. You might find a diamond in the rough, but they're guys you can put on your roster at the end, you know, your 18th, 19th, or 20th player, but they're generally not going to be starters. All right, halfway through tonight, we did 16, 17, 18, 19. Or I'm sorry, we did 17, 18, and 19. And here comes Toronto at 20. Surprising Toronto. Unbelievable. The Blue Jays just missed the playoffs with a 500 record, which is stunning. They started this process with uh, one waiver and three retired guys and got to the proper number, but they, there wasn't much addition or subtraction. 
so you're seeing some players from other squads. One of those is Clendenon, who they got from the Mets. They got Ag the previous season from the Mets, and both guys' contracts are up simultaneously. They also have Daryl Cheney and Ron Klimkowski. There's no Daryl Cheney in here, but there is a Klimkowski. So here's Clendenon. Nice card for him. Uh, in, in a split season, 263 at-bats, he hit 11 homers. Tommy A.G., uh, he's not a one anymore, but he is a two with a minus three arm. This card gets in the league. Frankly, both the Met players could get on this team. And Klimkowski is a keeper with this card or a future one. 340 ERA for a reliever. Not bad. Good options. Particularly for a team like Toronto to have good options here. And the two guys, they waived. They acquired Jeff Torborg in a trade to put him on waivers. And actually, Torborg, if you utilize this split effectively, you can get some production. Because he hits right, he's okay. Okay, I say. Don't know, uh, he had a minus one arm last year. If he still has a minus one arm, and he's a B hit and runner. Those are three things that could get him into the league. The ability to at least hit righties half of the split, possibly a minus arm, and a B-hit runner can help in situations for a 203 hitter. So, I'll just stack against him, but there are possibilities for him to get in the league. Phoebus? Hmm. This is going to be tough. Not very good against lefties. Okay against righties, like a 450 ERA. 447. 133 innings suggests he should be playing baseball. Baltimore gave up on him, and he went to the Padres. I think he was involved in the Pat Dobson trade that got him to Baltimore. All right, four in the books. We did Texas, Pittsburgh, Cardinals, and Toronto. So now the next four all made the playoffs last year. Beginning with a team in Las Vegas, the expansion team. Remember, every year an expansion team makes the playoffs. Las Vegas did it two years in a row with pretty good defense and some plucky pitching. They started this process uh, with a proper number of, of keepers, waivers, and retires, 4-2-2. Two, and two. And they made a deal. Actually, they made a couple deals. Take a look at the deals they made. They had Ray Culp, who they acquired... Uh, in the offseason, had a fine year, so they're going to try and roll him back. Again, he's pitching on three days rest with a 360 ERA. That's not bad. But they made a trade with the Dodgers to get Wes Parker. And why? Well, because Steve Garvey is going to command the first base duties for the Dodgers. Parker's career continues. He played his whole career in L.A., but there's no reason to have both Gold Glove caliber first baseman will be on the team at the same time. So the Dodgers sent him to, you know, to Las Vegas, hoping hoping they won't hurt him, hurt them. And he delivers a great defensive performance. And defense is now the key in Vegas, believe it or not. Look at the, you know, for first baseman, a switch hitter. It's not enough power normally, but a switch hitter, one at first, has power versus righties. I'll get this card in the league, I would think. So you have A-Rod. He's now a 1. Hitting 253 in a full season. And his Tiger teammate's also here, Ed Brinkman, who's a 2. Now Brinkman, believe it or not, gets MVP votes in 1972 when he's a 1 at shortstop and a Gold Glove winner. As the Tigers won the American League East. So you could have... If you play it right and get Brinkman 72, you could have three ones in your infield. Which, you know, that's a pretty good get for an expansion team that's won the division the last two years. That's really going to help their pitching staff. The two guys on waivers, Bacabella. Last year he had the ability to play first and catcher, does it again, plus third. Very versatile. I'd like to know what that arm is. The bat's not there anymore. He's down to 220. Tom Dukes is a ready reliever. Probably not going to get picked up. That's not very good at all, is it? Okay against righties, but you can 
usually find ready relievers. Uh, ERA looks great, and you'll think, oh, let's snatch this guy up. But usually when you have only 38 innings, there's a chance your split might be kind of weird. In this case, 69% versus righties where it's good, and then that's just like a 300 batting average over there. So, all right, let's continue to Milwaukee. Another surprising team, the Milwaukee Brewers. They made it wild card. Unbelievable. They're projected to be in last place, one of the worst teams in the American League. They made a wild card, mostly because Kansas City disappointed, as did Baltimore and Detroit and some others. Milwaukee started this process at with five keepers, and so they couldn't keep all five. They settled on four. They shipped one out, and the guys they kept on uh, around. Ken Sanders was an amazing closer, and he still delivers. Almost as good as last year. Still a 192 ERA. You know, I think he was a little bit better. He had outs on six last year. But they'll keep that. George Scott. Again, now he's just playing first. And he's, you know, he's George Scott. And he'll be picked up in one of the four years. They might want to shop around. The good part about Scott is he's flexible enough to take in any of the four years and he'll be good. Now, Jim Fragosi, you got to be careful with. He's starting to run out of uh, good years here. He's still a three at short, but he also plays all over the infield. Now, the batting average is down to 233 here. So that's, you know, he'll have a better year in 74 with a bat, but he doesn't have the glove. So that has to be weighed. J.L. Lou, still good defense, a 3-0 arm, not just a pinch hitter. Later in the decade, he's exclusively a pinch hitter. He can still play the outfield here. 279. Not bad, again, for Milwaukee. A team that you wouldn't think would be competing for much, and they are. Who do they waive? Uh, interesting waiver player here is Jerry Royce, because 71, he still isn't there yet. Takes him a little bit of time with the Pirates and then the Dodgers by the middle of the decade. 75. Are probably still too early for Jerry Royce to bloom. That's why he's on waivers with a 470 80 array, even though he could pitch on three days rest. Damn again, a lefty reliever. That's why he's been in the league. And he might do it again. It's it's not a you know, it's not a great card, but this guy gets into the league because he can kind of get lefties out. If you get those outs there, just get up the walks and don't pitch to righties. That's probably a 512 ERA. 596. So here's a guy with a 596 ERA who has a better than 50% chance of getting into the league. Which is stunning, but there's not a lot of lefties. There's a 32 team league. 32 teams, not a lot of spots available. Um, Alright, so we have two more to go tonight. Atlanta drafting 23rd. Uh, they uh, had a, a devastating offense, but their pitching just short-circuited their season. They did finish 24-22. and 22. They couldn't get out of the wild card round, though. They lost to Houston in that. They had a bunch of keepers. They had seven guys they wanted to keep. And the reality is, you can't keep seven guys. And some guys have to be traded, and some guys have to be put on waivers. They, did, they made a blockbuster deal with Baltimore to acquire Davey Johnson. So let's take a look at their keepers. It's Mo Drabowski. He was a closer last year. And he does a decent job here. That's a nice car. That's not bad. 345 in 60 innings. He's not vulnerable to much. Could be picked up. Mike McQueen improves. He was 19 years old in 1970 with that card. This card, we just need him to get lefties out, and that's good enough. And he's better over here than he was a year ago. 354. So we got two guys we like. Now, Davey Johnson, we're going to skip this analysis, because we know in 1973, Davey Johnson, it's 43 home runs. So we don't even have to worry about this card, which is Baltimore's card. Had a nice year, it'll be ignored. So it could just be, yeah, Drabowski and McQueen from this year. Again, you can only take two cards from any year anyway, so they may as well be those guys. 
So that's not bad for Atlanta. Their other keeper is Rico Cardi, who by this point would be a, an exclusively a DH, who also as a keeper, you might just not even keep if you find somebody better or at a different position. But Plus he, he hit 366 and he doesn't do anything like that in the future. Billy Cohen put on waivers, but boy, against lefties, he can get the job done as a designated hitter. Right? It's a 300 hitter right over there. 276 because he's, uh, you know, 14% over there with nothing on the card. And Pat Jarvis is on waivers because of performance issues as a starter. It's really not that bad. Card looks pretty good. 411 ERA. This is this is a decent enough card to get into the league, even if it was in the in the bullpen as your long man. Uh, the, I think this card gets into it. It's not a great card, of course, but a 411 ERA. But someone will take him. But Atlanta, you would think, should be deep enough, and they're trying to get catch up to the Mets, so they want better pitching. And last but not least, tonight we got the Minnesota Twins. And we'll do it a wrap after this. The Twins started the process uh, with three wave guys, and they did get down to just two. And the Twins, let's see, did they make any big deals? Nope, they just kept the same kind of crew going. They're keepers. Killebrew, going to run it back. He won the MVP last year. Actually won it in 69 in MLB. I gave him the award in my league last year. This is still a capable card for Killebrew with the homers and walks. He's probably down under 40 now. He's down to 28 after back-to-back -back years in the 40s. But he still has 114 walks. The capability at least to play first and third. This card gets into the league. Now Carew, you can shop around for him and go 307. I can do better than that. <laughs> You might find a 333 Carew sitting out there somewhere. Alright, Phil Roof will have a really nice card in 75 with homers on 1, 5, 6, and 7. That's a year away though. We can't get that one. And this one's not very good either. So you want this a future year for Phil Roof. Which leads us to Stan Williams. He had a monster 70. 10 and 1 with a 199 ERA. This card, 415. Really, these keepers aren't particularly fantastic. Killebrew, definitely. I think we were shopping around for Carew and Roof. Could be Stan Williams. Or it could be, you know, somebody off the street. And the two guys, they decided to put on waivers. They acquired Joe Haig from St. Louis. And he's still with them, actually. And maybe the Cardinals reacquire him. Uh, still good defensively. And as if you put him in a platoon uh, as a lefty, Boom, he does a nice job. He gets somebody versus left-handed pitching. So here's a case where a 226 hitter looks not that bad. If you just look at him over here. Ron Paranowski had a great run with the Dodgers and Twins. He's starting to fall off a little bit. That's why he's on waivers. Sadly, with a 546 ERA. Would like to get him into the league. And you're going to be like, well, I don't think he gets lefties out. He only gives up singles to him, though. So that's not bad. And that'll be a wrap for tonight. We've gone through 24 teams in the 1971 box looking at uh, keepers and the guys put on waivers. We'll wrap the uh, next eight playoff teams next week. And then we'll move into the future boxes of 72, 73, and the brand new box we haven't seen yet of 1974. Put the twins back there. All right, thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you next time.